Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to St. Mary's Most Nondove with Hilton's virtual church service. Uh, thank you very much for join, joining us. Today's liturgy can be found by clicking on the link below. And as we begin uh, our act of worship this morning, let us all just be still for a moment or two and just know that we are in the presence of God our Father, the God of love. And so to our liturgy. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So we have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of God is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And so we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore, shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. And safe in the knowledge that we are indeed a forgiven people, we have this prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all, to you be glory and praise for ever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. And now through the deep waters of death you have brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts, as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And now we have our, our hymn for today, Come Down, O Love Divine.
beautiful hymn that. Uh, we're now going to have our first reading uh, from the Acts of the Apostles, and this is brought to us by Steve. Thank you, Steve. The first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptising these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Here ends the first reading. Thanks for that reading. We now say together the canticle, A Song of David. Blessed are you, God of Israel, for ever and ever. For yours is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Riches and honor come from you and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might. Yours it is to give power and strength to all. And now we give you thanks, our God, and praise your glorious name. For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, shall be for ever. Amen. Now Ryan will uh, bring us uh, our second reading from John's Gospel. Thank you, Ryan. This reading is taken from John chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends, you are my friends, if you do do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I'm giving you these commands so that you may love one another. And thank you for that reading. Let us pray. Loving God, open your word to our hearts and our hearts to your word that our lives might be conformed more and more each day to the image of your Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I'd like us to uh, imagine just for a, a moment that uh, next Friday, uh, next Friday evening, we will be uh, hosting a quiz evening 
uh, via Zoom, of course, against All Saints Michelover. And uh, we can choose from any one of the following three celebrities to be uh, a part of our team. And so we have uh, Anne Hegarty, a.k.a. The Governess. Uh, we have uh, Marcus Rashford, who uh, plays for Manchester United. Uh, and or we can choose Catherine Jenkins, the uh, world famous singer. Uh, who, I wonder, are we going to choose? Well, certainly my choice, and I'm sure that most of you would agree, uh, would be to go for Anne Hegarty uh, because uh, she just has so much knowledge and is uh, so incredibly brainy. When choosing someone to be part of uh, a team, a Chris team like this, you really do want somebody who's got a lot of general knowledge uh, and certainly uh, Anne Hegarty, the governess, has that in, in bucket loads. And of course, it's great if uh, you want to be a part of the team and, and you're chosen to be part of the Chris team. But it's not so great if you really wanted to be involved, um, but you're not selected. What then, though, if the following day, on the Saturday, there was to be a football match against a, a team of players made up of uh, members of uh, Derby Cathedral? Uh, and again, we could choose from uh, one of those three celebrities to be part of uh, that football team. So we've got uh, the governess, we've got Kat Catherine Jenkins, and we've got Marcus Rashford. Who are we going to choose? Well, my vote automatically will go to Marcus Rashford, uh, simply because he's one of the best footballers in the land at this moment in time. And I definitely think that he could uh, tip the game in our favour. Uh, Personally, I would have to play in goal because I haven't got the energy to even get to the halfway line, uh, never mind to run around for 90 minutes. Again, to be chosen in that team, and I would be disappointed if, if I weren't, uh, even if it was only as a sub and I could wear the strip. But um, uh, it's great to be chosen for a team, but if you're overlooked and not selected because the manager doesn't uh, consider you to be quite good enough to be included in the squad, then uh, it's pretty much uh, incredibly disappointing. But then, finally, on the Sunday nights, busy weekend, uh, we're taking part in a singing competition and we need to put together a small choir to compete uh, again via Zoom uh, against other local churches in the Derby Diocese. So uh, who do we want to be involved uh, in, in that particular competition? Uh, Catherine Jenkins, Marcus Rashford and Hegarty. Well, I don't know what uh, Marcus Rashford's voice like or even uh, Anne Hegarty, uh, but uh, for me, it'd have to be um, Catherine Jenkins. It's a no-brainer, isn't it? Because she's got such a, an amazing uh, singing voice. So once again, for those who uh, have the privilege to sing alongside Catherine Jenkins, it, it would be... Uh, perhaps an understatement to say it would be uh, a high point uh, in their life. However, for anyone who auditioned but was not successful uh, in being included in the choir, then again, it would be uh, just a, an amazing, incredible disappointment. 
when having to choose someone to be a member of a team or a group or a choir, it's only natural to choose from those who've got the, the right skills or, or gifts rather than uh, choosing someone who on the surface doesn't appear to possess uh, what you're looking for or, or what's required for that particular team's need. Compare then this uh, next scenario. Jesus needs a team of his very own in every generation to share the good news of his love with others. Who do you think he's going to choose? What sort of people do you think he might uh, target to be part of uh, this very special team of his? Do you think he might go for those who are uh, physically fit, like uh, Marcus Rashford, or or incredibly educated and brainy, uh, like uh, uh, the governess? Um, or do you think he might go for those whose lives seem to be sorted and who are seen to be good role models uh, by all and sundry? Or perhaps he might uh, simply go for those who are extremely wealthy and organised and powerful and who have access to others like themselves, wealthy, powerful organized. The truth of the matter is that Jesus welcomes all and any who wish to be in his team, who wish to be associated with him, uh, rich or poor. An ordinary person or a powerful, rich, wealthy person someone who is educated, someone who is not educated or barely educated, those whose lives on the surface appear to be perfect, as well as those whose lives are broken for whatever reason. The truth of the matter is that Jesus truly does welcome all and any who wish to be associated with him uh, into his team. We don't have to necessarily uh, have obvious skills or uh, gifts in any particular area. Everyone who wishes to be associated and part of Jesus' team is welcome uh, to join it. The central words of the gospel reading that we had today are those in which Jesus says that his disciples did not choose him, but he cho chose them. Verse 16 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit, the kind of fruit that endures. I trust then that we can all take great pride, and that is pride with a small p and not a capital P, in the knowledge that Jesus chose and chooses each one of us to be a part of his team for no other reason than that he loves us and wants us to be uh, involved and included. However, it doesn't end there, does it? For whilst Jesus has chosen us to be a part of his team out of love and for no other reason, he has nevertheless called us for a purpose, and that purpose is to bear fruit, the kind of fruit that endures. But what then is this fruit that uh, Jesus is speaking about? Quite simply, it's the fruit of love. Jesus wants us to take the love that we ourselves have received from him into the world. But how are we to do it? Well, we can do it by beginning to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. Sometimes Christians have lived as if we're sent into the world to compete with one another or to quarrel or dispute with one another. And that has been uh, 
and love, just not part of his plan. For if we cannot love those who are like us in what they believe and profess, how will we be able to love the stranger or the refugee or someone of a different culture or faith? The church will only grow when others see something in us that they want for themselves. That something may be a sense of peace or a sense of joy, a sense of kindness or a sense of goodness, a sense of faithfulness, a sense of generosity. When people see those kinds of virtues at the heart of an individual believer's life and at the heart of the church, then they will be of a mind to want to belong themselves. And you and I will fulfil Jesus' call to, and I quote, bear much fruit, the kind of fruit which endures the fruit of love. Let us pray. Father God, may what we say with our lips and believe in our hearts be revealed in our lives, that our love for you will be seen as attractive by all who know us and will draw many into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us uh, say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now uh, Heather is going to lead us in a, a time of prayer. Thank you, Heather. Lord Jesus, we come to you today and thank you for the privilege of praying for others. We thank you that through your name we can come boldly before you and pray with confidence according to your will and know that you hear us. We lift up those who live in the village and surrounding areas and those who attend the services at St Mary's. Begin with those who follow you and help them influence others for good. Deepen their love for you and for people around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our Queen and all leaders who will serve you faithfully, especially the new elected local councillors. Help them to exemplify your values and make them bold in their faith. Strengthen our own families and those closest to us. May our love for you help us to love and forgive others and make a difference in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We especially pray for the citizens of India who continue to battle day by day, hour by hour with the COVID-19 pandemic. It has made us more aware of the privilege we hold living in such an affluent country. And for this, we are truly grateful. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
we pray for the lost, the hurting, the lonely, the sick, the dying, the bereaved, and those who are imprisoned be behind both visible and invisible walls. Send your comfort, your peace, and your calming presence to those who are without hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So many needs, Jesus, but you are adequate for every need. Your name is powerful and your power is great. So it's in your name that we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those uh, lovely prayers, Heather. We continue in an attitude of prayer uh, with the collect for today. The uh, special prayer for the sixth Sunday uh, of Easter. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. the prayer of blessing. And now may the spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and work of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you all uh, once again for joining us for this act of worship. Uh, do keep yourselves safe in, in the coming week. And we hope that uh, you'll be able to join us next week when our service, uh, which will be one of uh, Holy Communion, will be held in church and uh, not online. So we do welcome you to come along uh, to St Mary's uh, for the service of Holy Communion next Sunday morning. Every blessing to you all, and hopefully we'll see you next week in church. Bye-bye.